Hello and welcome to Physics Tutorials with Uviemine Collins or oh, no Brad Pia. Simply call me Mr. Collins, alright? In this video we shall be looking at an experiment to calculate the Young's modulus of a meter rule using an oscillating cantilever beam. We are provided with the following a vena caliper, a G clamp, meter rule, um, sets of masses, three 100 gram masses and 150 gram mass, then a stopwatch. For this experiment, I shall be making use of a plastic meter rule. I'll tell us why as we proceed in this experiment. The instruction says, having been given those items, we are to measure and record the breadth and the thickness of the meter rule. This we shall do with the aid of a vena caliper. This is a setup. It says we have to clamp the ruler firmly to the edge of the bench as shown in the figure above such that the distance L is 80 centimeters. Next we are expected to attach 50 gram mass to the free end of the meter rule and then to displace the ruler slightly to perform vertical oscillations. And after that we are expected to read and record the time t for 10 complete oscillations and also to determine t squared. Next, we're given um, several masses as well, 100, 150, 200, 250 and 300 gram masses. We're told to repeat the experiment using these masses. Now, this is the major reason why I made use of a plastic material for this experiment, because if you use a wooden meter rule it snaps at the 300 gram mass okay it would break because it is trying to restore the equilibrium it's trying to balance the moment all right um that's not for this video i'll probably give a lecture on that on a separate video we're given a formula here which connects the mass and t squared don't forget it says it said for each case we should determine t and t squared the formula that connects the mass and t squared was also given to us y equals 16 pi squared l cube over bd cube into delta m over delta t squared the symbols are told to us d is the thickness b is the breadth or the width l is the projecting length y is the young's modulus in si Units. So I told the plot a graph of m as the mass on the vertical axis against t squared on the horizontal axis. Then we're told to find the slope of the graph and afterwards to use that slope to obtain the Young's modulus of the meter rule in SI units. Okay, I'll teach us how that will be done. Then lastly, it says estimate the standard error in the calculated Young's modulus. This right here is a vena caliper. Let's learn how it's been used. This is called the thumb screw. This up here is called the locking screw. These are called the inner jaws, while these are called the outer jaws. This here is called the deep bar or the deep rod, while these values here are called the main scale, and then the values inside here are called the vena scale. Okay, now let's learn how to use these instruments. With the thumb screw, we can widen the jaws or we can decrease the jaws. Having been taught how to use a vena caliper, let's apply it. Now, you can see that the ends of the vena caliper or the jaws rather are used or are held firmly at the sides of the meter room to measure the width. Okay, now. If you read the value, if we zoom in, you discover that on the main scale, the value that we have just before the inception of our vena scale is 2.6. How do I know that? Now, there are 10 small divisions between each centimeter on the main scale. For instance, this is 3 and this is 4, right? So this is 3.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then this is 4. So if we read this backward, this is 3, this is 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, 2.6. 2.6 is the reading on the main scale that comes just before the first 
reading on the vena scale okay so we have 2.6 from the main scale now what is the next digit to add to that if we come to the vena scale here we have this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 the next value to add to that is the value where the reading on the vena scale matches that on the main scale for the zero here it doesn't match it for one it doesn't for two it doesn't for three there's a perfect match here okay so the thickness therefore or sorry the width therefore of our meter rule is 2.63 again we're saying 2.63 not because of the three here no but because it is at the number three point here number three calibration here of the vena scale that is the point that matches with the main scale okay so this is zero one two three it aligns with this reading on the main scale so we'll have 2.6 from the main scale and then 0 0.03 on the vena scale as such the width of this meter rule is 2.63 all right now let's also use the same instrument to measure the thickness you can see that the jaws of the vena caliper here are held firmly at the ends of the meter rule all right to measure the thickness if we zoom in we'll discover that there is no value behind the vena scale all right there's no value here so this will be zero point something okay now let us come here we can see Again, there are 10 small divisions. It's still the same vena caliper, so there are 10 small divisions. If this is 9, sorry, if this here is 1, then this is 0 0.9, this is 0 0.8. And then, coincidentally, it matches perfectly with the vena scale there, so this is 0 0.80. Okay, if we had 0 0.8 here and the vena scale matches with another value here maybe um, the third value of the vena scale matches it would have been 0 0.83 but since the zero scale here the zero reading here matches with the main scale it means we have 0 0.80 all right so that is the thickness of the material 0 0.8 which is same as 0 0.80 centimeters we are expected to use this clamp to hold this meter rule at a 20 centimeter mark such that the part that is outside of the table is 80 centimeters. So let's do that. I would first open up our clamp and then I'll fix it. I just ensure that the part that protrudes from the table is uh, 80 centimeters because the whole length of the meter rule is 100. So if from here to this end is 20, it means the part out there is 80. And then I fasten the clamp to the board. Next thing we need to place our 150 grams mass at the end the mass should be placed at the free end of our meter rule here we have a 100 gram mass and this is a 50 gram mass so together they give us 150 grams okay so we take them down and we attach them to the free end of our meter rule okay so once they are there firmly placed we then read and record the value for 10 complete oxidations the time for 10 complete oxidations i tilt it downwards and as soon as i let go my count starts i will ready one two go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's 5.82 seconds I'm going to perform this experiment twice okay so i'll reset the stopwatch and then I tilt it downwards, I let go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now this is 5.60 seconds. Alright. Next, I would 
record that and then it says use 200 gram mass so now i have 100 gram masses two of them together and then let me be sure they are firmly placed next i can reset my stopwatch and then and then let go out start the count already here we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that is six point two two seconds again we'll have to perform it to get out t2 tilt it downwards reset our stopwatch and we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now this is six point two one seconds they're close all right having performed the experiment these are the values we have for the mass and for the t1 t2 t average and the square of t average all right next up we are to choose a suitable scale there are steps i have outlined to guide us in our choice of a good scale first step is to identify the value which is the highest of the quantity we are going to plot here we are plotting the mass m on the vertical axis the highest here is 300 grams next we're told to count the number of big boxes we have along the axis of interest knowing that each big box usually corresponds to about one centimeter or two centimeters depending on your graph for my graph here it corresponds to two centimeters if i count i have 14 big boxes along the vertical axis the third step is for us to divide the highest number by the number of big boxes which means 300 divided by 14 that gives me 21.43 next we have to round up that number to the nearest suitable greater number since i have obtained 21.43 for each two centimeters, it means I would want to work with 25 grams per centimeter or 25 grams, sorry, for two centimeters because each of the big boxes on my graph are two centimeters. Okay, I'll soon show you my graph. So two centimeters, which means I have 25 grams for two centimeters or I can say two grams to 25 units on the y axis all right because the units of the mass there is grams so it's like i say two centimeters to 25 grams or i say two centimeters to 25 units okay now let's do the same thing for the x axis if i count here there are 10 big boxes along the x axis the highest number there is 5.98 sorry it's 59.83 if i divide 59.83 by 10 i'll get five point 983 if i divide 59.83 by 10 i'll get 5.983 i can't work with five it'll be too small i wouldn't have a place for the maximum number if i use five okay so i'll work with the nearest greater number all right it says the nearest suitable greater number which to me is 10 okay as much as you can avoid odd numbers avoid things like um six seven eight nine okay so I think I'll work with 10, which means on the x-axis, I have 2 centimeters to 10 units, all right? Or you can say 2 centimeters to 10 seconds squared, all right? You're still in order. So this is the graph. We're plotting a graph of mass against t squared. I have brought them out. I brought out the values we need to plot. And then that's the scale that we talked about for the x-axis, 2 centimeters to 10 units. And then for the y-axis, it is 2 centimeters to 25 units. So let us put our units. Okay. Let us label our axis. On the axis, um, on the vertical axis, we have mass in grams. You can see it's very important to do that. We put the label mass in grams. While on the x-axis, on the horizontal, we have t squared in second square. Very important that you do that. The next thing to do is to put the title of your graph. It's a graph of mass m in grams against 
the square of time that's t squared in second squared now let us plot our graph let us get the points let's identify the points first of all we must know what each of the lines stand for we said from here we said each of the tick boxes this is a tick box here this is another tick box so i skipped the 25 just to have a neat graph all right i skipped 25 here I skipped okay now this is 50 i skipped this one this should have been 75 100 125 150 175 and so on but i skipped them so that you can have a neat graph all right and then what does each small box stand for now if from here to here is 25 centimeters sorry it's 25 grams it means each small box would be 25 divided by 10 because there are 10 small boxes between here and here okay between each big box there are 10 small boxes so if each big box represents 25 gram it means therefore that each small box stands for 25 divided by 10 which is 2.5 grams so this is 2.5 this is 5 7.5 10 12.5 15 17.5 20 22.5 and then we have 25 all right similarly on the x-axis it's important to know what each box stands for if from here to here we have 10 seconds square or 10 units and then there are 10 small boxes in between it implies therefore that each of the small box stands for 10 over 10 and that is one so we have zero here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and then ten all right it's important to do that to know what each small box stand for now our first reading on the x-axis is 15.132 while for the y-axis it's 50 so how do we get 15.132 here this is 10 11 12 13 14 15 the next is 16 15.132 is closer to 15 than it is to 16 so i'll use the 15 points if we go further we'll have other points you can plot them on your graph okay you can plot them on your graph these are the points this and then the next is that and then these are the points okay next thing for us to do is to draw our line of best fit the line of best fit will pass through the maximum number of points such that the points which are not on the line should be evenly spaced or evenly distributed which means some to the left and some to the right okay for this graph this can be considered as my line of best fit you can see it passes through one two and three it passes through the three points one two and three so the points not on the graph are shared one is to the left and then two of them are to the right okay so three points go through or the line goes through three points and then three points are not on the line such that two are to the right and one is to the left that's a good line of best fit okay next thing we have asked we are asked to find the slope so i would take convenient points I, I can clearly read off okay so here is a line here and then this one here what guides your choice for the slope or for the points to draw out as a slope one your slope should be at least one third of your graph okay it should be something big don't draw a small thing here so that's the slope and then it's not a must that you must use the first point and the last point no for instance for this graph our last point is an outliner it doesn't fit into the line so we cannot make use of that it's not even a must that you must make use of points from your table no just get convenient points that you can easily read off their values from okay for instance i can read off these values both along the x-axis and the y-axis you can see the lines have been I have drawn this here is 60 and this here we can count this is 20 this is 21 20 24 this is 23 all right so that's for the x-axis for the y-axis we clearly have 100 and 300 so let us get our slope our slope is 
the change in the axis on the vertical quantity over change in the axis on the horizontal quantity. Like I said, we have 300 minus 100 over 60 minus 23. All right. If you play with that, you'll get 5.4 gram per second square. It's important that you put the SI unit for your slope using the units of the quantities on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. For this graph, the mass was on the vertical axis, its unit is in gram, and the t squared, which is time square, was on the horizontal axis, and its unit is second square. Next, we're told to find the Young's modulus of the meter rule. Don't forget, we're given a formula y equals 16 pi squared L cube over BD cube into delta M over delta T squared. Now, we plotted a graph of M against T squared. It means therefore that the slope we have found is our change in M over change in T squared. And as such, we can substitute this fraction inside this bracket with our slope S. Okay, and as such, the formula becomes 16 pi squared L cube S over BD cube. All right, now let's fix in our values. If we do that, we'll have 16 pi squared times, don't forget we said the length that protrudes is 80 centimeters, all right? And then for our slope, we'll have it as 5.4 grams per second squared. And then for the breadth or the width of the meter rule, it is 2.63 centimeters. While well, for its thickness, it is 0 0.8. If you play with this, you would obtain 3.24 times 10 to the power 8 grams per centimeter cube second squared. Next, we're told to convert it. The question says in the standard units. Now, we know that 1,000 grams make 1 kilogram. All right? If we divide both sides by 1,000, on the left-hand side, we're left with 1, which means 1 gram. On the right-hand side, 1 over... 1000 means 1 over 10 to the power 3, all right? And by laws of indices, that's the same as us writing 10 to the power minus 3, all right? So we have that 1 gram equals 10 to the power minus 3 kilograms. And then how about our centimeters to meter? We know that 100 centimeters make up 1 meter, all right? Again, if we divide both sides by 100, we'll have 1 left on the left-hand side, that's 1 cm. And then for the right hand side, we have 1 over 100, which is similar to saying 1 over 10 to the power 2, and that gives us 10 to the power minus 2 by applying the laws of indices. Okay, so let's put that together. We'll would have that uh, 1 gram per centimeter second squared. We said our gram is equivalent to 10 to the power minus 3 kilograms, and then we said our centimeter is equivalent to 10 to the power minus 2 meters. All right. By the laws of indices, when our 10 to the power minus 2 goes up, it becomes 10 to the power 2. And then we can add up the powers. We'll have minus 3 plus 2, and that will give us minus 1. What does it mean? It means when we're converting from gram per centimeter second squared to kilogram per meter second squared, we multiply by 10 to the power minus 1, which means we divide by 10. Because 10 to the power minus 1 is the same as 1 over 10. All right? If we do that, it means our Young's modulus, therefore, would become 3.24 times 10 to the power 7 kilograms per meter squared second squared. Next up, we're told to find the error, the standard error in the calculated Young's modulus. Don't forget, we were given a formula for the Young's modulus. All right. Now, the error in the calculated Young's modulus would come from the error in the measuring instruments and the error in the slope. Okay, 16 wasn't measured. It was given to us as a constant. Same thing also with our pi squared. All right, so the errors would be found in L because we measured the length. All right, so we have delta L, which means the error or the uncertainty in the length. From our delta M over delta T squared, which stands for the slope, we have that the error is the error in our slope. That's delta S. And then for the breadth or the width, its error is our delta B. All right, and then for our D cube, where D stands for the thickness, its error is delta D. Now, what, how do we find delta L, delta S, delta B, and delta D? Our delta L, the length was measured using a meter rule. All right, so the error in the length, therefore, is the error in the meter rule. 
The same thing also, our B and D were both measured by vena caliper. So the error in B and D are also the error in the vena caliper. All right, now let us start with that. How do we find the error in the vena caliper? The rule of thumb here is that the error in a measuring instrument is the smallest increment divided by two, that is half of the smallest increment. Now, what is the smallest increment for a vena caliper? Let us study one. Now, this is a vena caliper. On the main scale, there are 10 centimeters. All right. Now, between each centimeter, there is a smaller division. All right. There are 10 small divisions between each centimeter. As such, it appears that on the main scale, the smallest increment is 0 0.1 centimeter. Okay, because between each main value, for instance, this is 4 and this is 5. Between them, we have 10 small divisions. Okay, it means that the smallest reading, therefore, on the main scale is 1 over 10, which gives us 0 0.1 centimeter. However, it doesn't end there. For the vena scale, it helps us to divide these into 10 smaller values. Okay, which means when I have 0 0.1, divided by 10 and that gives us 0.01 as such the smallest increment on the vena caliper is 0.01 centimeters okay now we say the uncertainty or the error in a vena caliper would be the smallest increment divided by 2 and that would give us 0.005 centimeters all right we can do the same thing for our meter rule. For the meter rule, its smallest division. Let us see it here. Now this is 30 and this is so this is this is 30 here and this is 31. Alright, that's one centimeter. Alright. Now between them we have 10 small divisions. It means the smallest increment for a meter rule is 1 over 10. And that is 0 0.1. Now for the meter rule, it stops there. There's no vena scale to break it down further. Okay, so have therefore that the smallest increment on a meter rule is 0 0.1 centimeter and as such the error in a meter rule is 0 0.1 over 2 and that gives us 0 0.05 centimeters all right now how about the error in the slope the formula for the error in the slope is delta s equals 4w over nr where our w is the vertical scatter and our r is the range of the quantity that we have along the x-axis now let us go back to our graph. Now, how do we get the, vert the vertical scatter? How do we get the range? How do we get n? I didn't say that n stands for the number of points. Okay, now, how do we get the vertical scatter? We draw lines through the outliners. We have first, our first value here is an outliner. First reading here is an outliner. The third reading here also is an outliner. The fourth reading is an outliner. The other readings fall into the line of best fit. So we draw lines through the farthermost outliners. All right. On the left here, this is the only one standing. So we draw a parallel line through it. Parallel because it goes parallel to the line of best fit. All right. And then for the on the right here, our first reading here is the outermost outliner. All right. So we draw a line through it as well. Okay. And then we count the spacing the vertical spacing between them all right i would want to use this point here this point here this is zero we have one two three four five six seven eight okay so there are eight small boxes between the parallel lines that goes through the outliners all right there are eight small boxes but don't forget we said on the vertical axis each small box represents 2.5 grams it means therefore that we have 8 times 2.5 and that gives us 20 grams all right so the vertical scatter for this graph is 20 grams how about n number of points here the number of points we have are 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so the number of points is not 5 but is 6 let me change that here six all right number of points is six so next we have find the range the maximum value we had on our x-axis was 59.830 while the lowest was 15.132 means therefore that the 
range is 44.698 seconds squared. All right, now we'll put this together to find the error in the slope. If we put that together, we'll have delta S equals 4 times 20 over 6 times 44.698, and that gives us the error in slope as 0 0.3 grams per second squared. Now we'll put in these values to obtain the error in the Young's modulus. Don't forget this is our formula where we found that the error in the length is 0 0.05 centimeters, the error in the breadth, which is the same as that of the thickness because they're both measured by the same instrument, which is the vena caliper, the error is 0 0.005 centimeters. The error in the slope, we just obtained that to be 0 0.3 grams per second square. We put them together and we have the error in the Young's modulus as 6.0 times 10 to the power 4 grams per centimeter second square. But don't forget we're told to make sure it's in, it's in standard units of kilograms per meter second squared, which is the same thing as a Newton per meter squared, which is a standard unit for Young's modulus. Okay, so how do we convert our grams to kilograms and our centimeter to meter? We have done this before where we said to convert from grams per centimeter second squared to kilogram per meter second squared simply needs us to divide by 10 or to multiply by 10 to power minus 1. If we do that, we'll have that error in Young's modulus is 6 times 10 to power 3 kilograms per meter second squared, which means we can put the value together as 3.24 plus or minus 0 0.0006 times 10 to the power 8 grams per centimeter second squared. Now, why is it expressed like this? Don't forget we obtain our Young's modulus as 0 0.24 times 10 to the power 8 grams per centimeter second squared, right? And now the error must also be expressed in the same standard form, okay, which is times 10 to the power 8. Now, our 6 times 10 to the power 4, which we have obtained for the error in the Young's modulus, can also be expressed as 0 0.0006 times 10 to the power 8. Alright, so we need the error to be in the same standard form as the Young's modulus itself so that we can express them together like this. Alright, so a Young's modulus is 3.24 plus or minus 0 0.0006 times 10 to the power 8 grams per centimeter second squared or 3.24 plus or minus 0 0.0006 times 10 to the power 7 kilograms per meter second squared, which is also Newton per meter squared. If you have enjoyed this video, I would um, encourage you to subscribe so that you are notified when other videos are released, and also share it and give it a thumbs up. Alright, thanks for watching and see you in our next video.